everyone, I'm Allie with Potomac Beads, and this Better Beater episode is going to cover metal allergies and basically how to avoid them and how to get around the fact if people are suffering from metal allergies. Obviously, when we give gifts or when we make jewelry, we don't want people to have reactions to them. Most of the reactions you're gonna have to jewelry and to different metals are gonna be localized that you'll see something on the wrist or you'll see something, or what I always say is you can get kind of itchy ears that they're starting to bother you as you wear them. Sometimes this might occur because somebody's sweating and just kind of gets trapped underneath their jewelry and they get that ring line kind of, but a lot of times it's because people can't tolerate certain metals. If people have a metal allergy, chances are they know it already. And when they're looking to purchase or when they're looking to get a gift or have something made, or if you're making for yourself in a metal allergy, you're going to request something to guard against that. There's a number of different ways that you can look at those kind of options and kind of avoid some of those. A lot of things that you could do are using seed beads as alternative, using glass and other natural natural materials that aren't necessarily then going to affect because they don't have that metal. There's also ways to take metal items and coat them so that way they can at least last a little bit, although you'll have to reapply and recoat generally. So I'm going to go over some of the different ways that you can get around these metal allergies and hopefully wear and make jewelry to delight everyone. So I've got a number of different things sitting here as ideas for you for metal jewelry. Now the one thing kind of looking at these, there's the different options a lot of times, whether or not you're using ear wires or pre-finished sliders or even going in and doing any sort of clasps on your jewelry. Chances are, again, if people have that metal allergy, that they're gonna know it and it's gonna be an issue. One thing you can do with a lot of these pre-manufactured findings of different types of metal. A lot of times people will have a reaction, even if they haven't before, to some raw brass or antiqued brass. You can take Permalac and you can actually paint this on um, like a nail polish and paint it onto the surface to basically act as a hypoallergenic shield against these items. If you know that somebody is suffering from an ear allergy or from a metal allergy, it may be a good idea to actually go with a stainless or surgical steel when you're making jewelry. I actually prefer using these a ton rather than the plated, even though they're a little bit darker and sometimes they're darker than my actual mold material. I like using the stainless steel whether or not I'm using glue in posts or working with ear wires because they're not going to generally affect a lot of people that are sensitive to metals. So when it comes to earrings and ear wires, chances are you are gonna need some of that stainless steel or some people will, re will request gold filled. I have not had an issue with people that have metal allergies using gold filled, which has a really, really, really thick coating basically of the gold around them. You can also look for sterling silver earring alternatives as well. But check out the surgical steel, and that surgical steel is a great alternative to having to use any of the platings for the ear wires. Again, if you do have an ear wire, that's a lot of times you're gonna be stuck because you need something to go through the ear. And go ahead and grab some Permalac painted on clear nail polish, create that shield. You will want to reapply this periodically, and because uh, it's going to be going through your ear, you don't need to do it to the whole thing. Just think about where it's going in your ear, that little curvature, and actually apply it to that area. When you have something like an actual pendant or something that's going to be touching the skin, a clasp, you can also use the Permalac as an option. Another thing you can do with some things like pendants and these bezels here for the back of the bezel is you can actually take the ultra suede or the artistic leather and actually glue that on the back so that way it is not touching the skin that you're going to actually have this backing material that's touching. In this instance here, rather than gluing on a metal bell or anything, we actually did some bead embroidery and that Way, when you do the bead embroidery and actually go around in a cabochon setting here, you're not affixing to any metal, so you don't have that risk with a ring and having that glue in ring bail. You have this nice big ring and you don't actually have any metal on it that can get affected by water or any allergies. So that's an alternative that if you are looking to do something that has a nice big surface area, you can look into, there, into doing the Permalac on the back or creating basically a bezel and a setting with those seed beads and using a material like ultra suede or art, art leather to have that affected kind of area not be bothersome to your skin. 
When you're talking about clasps or closures, that's a whole nother area that you can have on somebody's back of their neck that's bothering them or on their wrist. It's always a good idea to learn multiple techniques how to deal with these issues. The easiest thing is to actually look for clasps that are not metal and don't have metal in them at all. One way to do this is to look for things like buttons, whether or not you have a crystal faceted button or a regular cup button, table cup button, or even a wooden button here. Those are great alternatives to actually using a metal clasp. You can use these with regular beading wire and crimp beads, taking it through those holes. You can use it with bead weaving and thread and needle. These also are really cool earrings too, just as a heads up if you wanna use any of the buttons, they look great as an earring. Another alternative is to think about the length that you want. So if you want to have a clasp or a closure and you don't want, um, and you think about it that your necklace actually will fit over the head, just ignore the clasp. Check out the video that we did on the actual silk cording, the Griffin silk. You can make a necklace that's long enough that you don't even need any of these clasps or closures and it can just fit right over the head and then you don't need to worry about it. So that's an idea as well as to make something that will fit generally over the head. Depending on your head size, that's gonna be about 20 to 22, 24 inches inches to make sure that it's going to go over and not be an issue. If you do need to use a clasp or want to use a clasp, buttons look great in the back of necklaces as well as bracelets. I use them a ton for bracelets because I also find them really, really easy to get on and off. The other thing is that there's some metallic colors in these glass that are gonna give you that nice silver or gold look without having that allergy involved. The other thing that you can do is take a little bit more time and actually make your own button clasps. You can make your own button clasps like we did here in this cabochon button tutorial and using seed beads made a kind of bail. This one here I did a wire guard and it does have a little bit of metal on it. I could paint that again with Permalac, but generally speaking that's not going to be on somebody's skin because it's going to sit on top of the bracelet and be kind of around the loop. But you can do a loop on your own without actually having to use a metal piece as well like Anna did with this larger cabochon and kind of gluing into that. So that way you don't have any of that metal actually on the skin. Also gives you a great alternative to kind of play up your piece and create that other unique element to it. Again, just like doing seed beads with a button or a cabochon and creating your own button and clasp, you can also use seed beads to create your own closure clasp. Whether or not you're doing a loop around a cup button or you can make your own toggles. Here's with 8-0 seed beads, here's 11-0. Generally, you're gonna do them a lot of times with Delicas. You can kind of play them up. And here, this is just connected so that way it doesn't lose its mate. And you can finish off and have the toggle bar and toggle loop. Again, these things then become actually part of the piece and a focal. This will work on necklaces, bracelets. Um, you can even kind of do the same idea also and have a fun time with just doing two that drop down as earrings. Not part of the allergy thing, but a little idea for you as well. So we have all of these different YouTube videos that work with adding and creating and doing these clasps alternatives. We also have that Permalac that not only works to hold in products and keep the finish on certain check products, but it can also be used on metal to have that nice hypoallergenic seal that you can use. Again, you'll want to repeat this as you're going on. Obviously, the other thing that you can do is instead of using a bracelet that needs a clasp, is just do one that you can stretch over the wrist or something um, that's going to be, and it's something, excuse me, that's gonna be easy to take on and off. That way you don't need to worry about the metal. One thing also when thinking about metal in your jewelry and metal design is that often to work as spacers, the metal actually, these are sea beads here, but the metal actually really doesn't touch the skin because the beads are gonna sit higher up and you can see I don't even have those beads actually touching the skin. So think that aspect as well when you're creating your jewelry. Don't be afraid to use metal and to have it involved. The main place that people have metal allergies and reactions is generally speaking the earrings. So keep that in mind when you're looking for stainless steel or surgical steel, or if you wanna paint on some of that permalac and have that be a bonding agent to create and keep that away from the ear. You can also switch to gold filled or sterling silver as an alternative. When it comes to necklaces and bracelets, check out those metal 
alternatives like glass, crystal, or wood, or simply make your own clasp enclosure. There can be a lot of issues when it does come to metal, and obviously you don't want anyone to have an adverse reaction to your jewelry. It's a horrible feeling that you really, really don't want to have, and you want people to be able to enjoy it. So just think ahead. Know if you're making something for yourself versus making something for a friend that you can ask those details, or if you're making something to sell or distribute. Keep in mind, stainless steel is a pretty, pretty inexpensive alternative, and usually buttons, clasps, and closures that are not metal are gonna be less expensive than those that are. You can also take a little bit of extra time, make your own clasp out of some of those seed beads and sewing them together. We'll put in the description below me some links to some of those videos as well, so that way if you do wanna make your own buttons or your own toggle, or see how some of those things are used, you can check the multitudes of YouTube videos that we have. Also below me, in that kind of little down arrow on the right-hand side, especially if you're on an iPad, it's on the right-hand side there, or hit that show more if you're on a regular desktop, are links to different products that you can purchase from us online at potomacbeads.com as well as potomacbeads.eu. You can also subscribe to this YouTube channel and you'll get regular updates when I do new Better Beater episodes to help you become a better beater, as well as new tutorials, new videos, and when we go live. As always, thanks so much for watching this Better Beater episode on kind of working around some of those allergies. Hopefully you learned a little bit and take this on to make your craft better.